So I guess the question for you now, at least from your quarterback's perspective, and obviously spending a lot of time with head coaches and coordinators and, and being a leader of a team, for those two guys, you mentioned it, first game for both of them. Now, Matt Rule has been a head coach, and he's turned programs around, and so we yeah. know that he already has a track record to show up. But for someone like Ryan Walters, what's the message to the team? How do you get them back on track now here week two and moving forward, recognizing that it is just one game? Yeah. Well, I think he was, you know, he made the point, you know, look, the two areas we have to be better. Uh, we've got to run the ball better. You know, Hudson played well. They threw the ball well, but barely over a hundred yards rushing. So they need more balance offensively. And he's a defensive guy, right? He was the defensive coordinator at Illinois, one of the best defenses in college football last year. That's what helped him get the head coaching job. And they were not good enough on defense. So uh, the thing about it is they, they got a tough assignment next week. They've got to go into Blacksburg and play Virginia Tech, who's not a great team, but, you know, they won their first game. They're a hard team to play up there in Blacksburg. And uh, so that's a that's a tough challenge for Purdue, you know, going into week two. And in the case of Nebraska, um, you know, Matt Rule's number one job is to keep his quarterback confident, Jeff Sims, you know, because he did a lot of good things. He just was careless with the football and some turnovers. And the last interception really was the difference in the ball game. So, but he's talented. Uh, you know, Matt's kind of hanging his hat on the guy and he's got to keep him pumped up. And, you know, if you're Matt Rule and you're Nebraska, you're in a position right now to say, okay, we've got to make improvement from week one to week two. Nobody's going to give us a chance this week going into Boulder. Right. It's all going to be about Dion. It's all going to be about Colorado, all going to be about how good they are. And so for Nebraska, a chance to go in and, uh, you know, in a game that used to be a great rivalry and, and see if they can pull an upset. I do want to hit on it again real quick, because Jeff Sims, to your point, played well overall. He showed a lot of, of promise moving forward. There were, there were, what, three plays, essentially, that he has to eliminate entirely from his game, where he puts the ball in harm's way at the very end of the first half in the end zone. It's picked off. And then the, the obvious one, the late one, where you're driving with a chance to win the game, and instead you completely flip the field in favor of Minnesota at home, and they take full advantage for the game-winning field goal. But credit to Minnesota, to your point, for being poised. And again... It, Similar to, to Colorado in, in a obviously worse fashion because it was a loss, but similar to Colorado, I think a lot of people were surprised how poised and how good and, and how sharp Nebraska was in so many facets of that game, considering it was week one of this brand new era. Yeah, you take the turnovers out, and I, and I thought they did look like a, a much better football team. You know, defensively, they really kind of held uh, Minnesota completely in check until the very end when the field position really changed. But uh, a lot to build on, a lot of positives to build on in that week one, even though it was a loss. You know, the problem is it was a conference game. You know, it, it's it's different to lose a conference game. But uh, but I'll be I'll be really anxious to see what they look like uh, going into Boulder this week and, and if they're a better football team this week. And, you know, Minnesota – I was looking at this last week because, uh, you know, this is a team that they won nine games last year, right? They won a bowl game. They've won 10 games before me. He's had great – PJ's had great success there. So I'm sitting there looking at him like, okay, I know they had a really good running back. I know they had a quarterback that was experienced. They've had some wideouts. What else was part of their success last year? And, and I looked at some stats, final year stats from the Big Ten – and in little critical areas, they were excellent, like tops in the league. Third down offense, they were number one, third yeah. down conversions. Third down defense, they were right up there. They took care of the ball, fewest turnovers, fewest penalties and penalty yards per game. Um, you know, their points off a of turnover. So when they did turn it over, they only gave up, they gave up the fewest amount of points off turnovers yeah. of anybody in the Big Ten. Sudden change defense so you know a lot of the little areas of the game and little ways that that help you win minnesota's been outstanding in and we saw a perfect example of it you know they they really probably got outplayed for good portions of that game but they took advantage of the mistakes they capitalized on taking the ball away and found a way to win at the end 